lesson three of um, the CAD workshops. Uh, today we'll be covering of mates and assembly and those kinds of things. But before we get started, I guess just everybody make sure that you're all logged into Onshape. And then just um, type in the chat when you're ready. Okay, cool. So, as I said, um, for our lesson, we're going to review some of the material from the last class, introduce assemblies, and then after that, explore mates, which will probably be the bulk of the lesson. So, so for a review, sketches allow you to generate shapes on a two dimensional plane. You need sketches in CAD work to make your designs. Tools and constraints allow you to manipulate the sketch like the trim tool to cut parts of the sketch off or equal tool to set parts equal in size and the like. And then extrusions let you turn those 2D sketches into 3D geometry as shown here with this square here being extruded into a three-dimensional shape. So your productivity for this session is going to be to create, kind of create a three-dimensional puzzle that demonstrates at least three types of mates. So, so this might become more clear as lesson goes on, but in essence, make a bunch of shapes and you're going to be connecting them together. So um, some stuff that might have warranted a clarification from the last meeting for with Assemblies and the like are the shell, revolve, fillet, and chamfer tool. And so I'm gonna give some quick examples for those. But a summary for them is the shell tool calls on extrusion, which creates a shell with the original shape. It basically removes a face and then kind of creates a hole in the shape. The revolve um, extrudes a sketch around an axis, and then fillet, fillet tool is gonna round the corners of the shape, and then chamfer is going to create some bevels. So we're going to show some examples in this on-shape document here. So to show off what um, a revolve might look like, we're just going to make a quick sketch. We're going to show the front plane. We're not going to actually choose to start on the origin because we're going to be revolving the sketch around the origin. So we're actually going to start off a bit to the side, maybe like here. And then, then we're going to just dimension out a shape that we think that we think looks nice. Just kind of up like that, five, and then go like that, another point five, and then we can bring it down like that. And so, and so, we, so we have the shape here. We can define it more. By like, by like setting some of the angles, one ten, and kinds of stuff, and setting the lengths. But we have the shape here, and so we want to extrude it. And so normally, just extruding it out is just going to move out in one direction or the other, which we don't want because we want to go around the axis. So instead, what we're going to do is. We're going to, so what we do is we're going to select our sketch and then we're going to select revolve. And so when you open revolve, you'll initially see this box right here. And firstly, it's asking you which faces or sketch regions to revolve. So similarly to normal extrude, we just select the shape they want to extrude. And then it asks, then it asks you for the revolve axis, which is the axes that it's going to revolve around. So in our case, 
we're going to want to press this select make connector. And this will essentially put, essentially put on a connector that'll define the point where the axis is. So we want to click there. And so then that'll, so then that knows there's an axis going up this direction by following the Z axis, which is marked with the blue line right there. And so then you'll make this revolve and it'll make a shape that goes around the axis that you chose. And then once you've done that, there are a few other options. You can make it full, which is shown here, full 360 degrees. You can make it one direction, which will only shoot out in one direction. And then you can define how many degrees it goes out, either by dragging with the arrow or by typing in a number under revolve angle. And so then you have symmetric, which symmetric is similar to the one side, except it'll also mirror on the other side. So symmetrical. And then finally you have two directions, which is similar. However, you can individually assign different lengths for each of the sides that are extruding. So that can be a pretty useful tool, but for now we'll stick to full. And so that's how you can make kind of a revolved extrusion. And then from there, from there you can, maybe you want to make some of these edges a bit nicer. You can then use the chamfer or fillet tool. So the chamfer tool, basically it's going to ask you to select what entities to chamfer. So you need to select a face, which will chamfer all the edges connected to it as shown there and there, or you can select an individual individual edge and then you only chamfer that edge. And you can select multiple at a time as well. Just how many ever you want to chamfer, like so. And so then you do that and then that'll give and so then that'll give these beveled edges where it's not necessarily a curve, but it's a, it's a straight line that goes out from the initial face. And so you can define the distance, ever so you can define how big or how small you want the chamfer to be just by adjusting this number here. And then there's this box here that says tangent propagation. Usually, usually you'll just leave that on, but um, what it just does is if there are some, if there's some edges that are really nearby to an area where you want to put a chamfer, the chamfer will kind of spread over to that face, but or edge, but it's not really something to worry about. But so let's say you, let's say for the top part here, we don't want a chamfer, we want a more of a smooth curve, then we can use the fillet tool. And so this shouldn't work too much, but just like the chamfer tool, you select the edges that you want. Not that one, but and then it'll create this curved shape. And then once again, um, you can select how large it is, which in this case is the fillet's radius. But if you make it too big, then it, it's not going to work because it'll be conflicting with this part here. So just keep it reasonable size, and then it should work out fine, just like that. And so that's the roll of chamfer fillet tool, all that cool stuff. And so then I'm gonna do a quick demonstration for the shell tool. So in front of me, I have this sketch. It's a simple five by five square. Um, I can make I can make the shape a bit more interesting by do some corner rectangles on the side, making them. 1.5 and then setting that equal do that. And so then I can just go and trim out this portion and this portion. And so now I have this shape kind of here. Um, all the lines are blue because it's not fully defined. So if you want, you can try and fully define the whole thing. And all that does is that 
nothing's going to change if you add something or make something relative to it, which is useful if you don't want this shape getting modified at all due to any kind of external factors. But for now, we're fine with having it blue. We'll just extrude it normally, and we can extrude it out, say, 10 inches, you know, four inches, like that. And so now we can go over to the shell tool right here. And it's going to ask you for faces to remove. So you just select whatever face you want to remove, which for a single shape like this, you just, a lot of times you want one face. So we'll select this face right here. And so what that does is that this face is now removed. And so this object has been made into a shell. And so the shell thickness over here is however thick here to here is. And so you can make that whatever you might want it to be to suit your needs. And then this error right here um, says opposite direction. All that it does is this yellow line right here, it flips the side where the shell thickness comes out of. So shell tool, it's fairly simple, but can be a useful tool. But now we can move on to assemblies. And so assemblies is where you're going to be working with a lot of the more complex things you'll be making in on shape. And so on the bottom, you have these tabs right here, which you can navigate through all kinds of stuff. And there's an icon next to them. And the icon will indicate whether or not it is a part studio or an assembly. So it has those two shifted there. That's a part studio. It has to shape like that. Then it's then it's more so an assembly. And you can press you can press the plus sign to create new part studios, create assemblies or drawings or whatever you might want to make. So we can create a new assembly. And the assembly looks a bit different from we might find in a part studio. So unlike a part studio, there's not, um, there's not any kind of visible panes or axes, just the central origin dot. And that's because unlike a part studio, you're not gonna have any of these faces to select from. So if you wanna do something like that, you have to select directly a part that's in the assembly. And so to get parts into the assembly, what you do is you go over to insert, which also be done with pressing I, and then this menu will be brought up. And so you have a few tabs. So current document will show you parts that are within this document, which includes all of these tabs here. So we can select these for the drop down menu. And then if there's individual parts within the part studio, you can select those because, because a lot oftentimes you might end up with like multiple parts in one part studio. And so that's you can select the individual ones. So you have all that. And then this is for individual sketches. You wanna also move in some sketches for whatever reason you might have. And then assemblies, you can pull from other assemblies within your document. And so something else, under other documents, you'll find, you'll find documents that are within your greater team folders, like the CAD workshop folder, which you can pull in from, or from the public domain. Because um, a lot of documents on Onshape are public. If, if you're a free account, all your documents are public. So this one's also public. And so this is especially useful because if in, your pub, if in public you type in mkcad and you let it load, um, this, will, this will bring up a lot of already made CAD files of different types, which is very useful if you need, some, if you need something specific for your document. For example, if you need, if you need like a fastener or a bearing, you'll press on that. 
and then it'll bring up a bunch of different bearings that you can then select on to bring into your document, which you can click and then drag into. So that can be, so that's very useful if you need specific real life parts you put in your document. And then the third tab, standard content. This allows you to, to generate some, some geometry and put it into your assembly. So for example, right now, it's right now it's set for a hex bolt, but you can also select nuts, spin studs, chain rings, washers, select what measure standard it's set to, and then some extra properties for it, and then you can define its size, length, material, and all these things, and then you can just insert it, and then you have, and like here I have a pre-made X flange bolt, just like that. So that's also useful. But so to add parts to an assembly, you have two options. You can either just click, and then what that'll do is it'll bring it up, and if you're hovering over here, it'll center the part around the origin of the assembly which can be good for the first part. If you move your mouse outside, the part will follow your mouse and be placed in wherever you click. But to just center it on there, you just go up and then you press the check mark and then, and then you have it. And so that is general introduction to what an assembly is, how it works, and um, if we are all good, then we can move on to um, mates. So does anybody have any potential questions about assemblies so far? Not yet. Yeah, okay, cool. So, do percent so um, so we're gonna go through the main series of slides and then make an example for each of the mates. So facet mate, um, it's not really a GIF for this because it's um, principle. Essentially, what it does is you mate two entities together, and then it removes all degrees of freedom between them, and you can also offset entities. But in essence, you can bring two parts together. Then once you've done that they are not going to be moving. They're gonna be stationary. And if one piece moves, the other will move together with it, exactly how it is. So we can, so to demonstrate that, I've kind of made this simple kind of E shape, sketches just like that, two inches that way, one inch, one inch, two inches here, and then it's extruded by one inch. And so to show the mate, we're going to go into our assembly two. We're going to press insert, and we're going to insert this guy on the origin. And then we're also going to insert a second one, and we're going to put it right there. And so we're going to try and connect this point right here to this point with this piece rotated to the side. So it kind of comes together bit like a wonky puzzle piece. So we're gonna go up to the fasten mate icon, which can be also accessed by pressing M on your keyboard. And so it'll we'll bring up this basic box. Um, you can also just select any other mates from there. And it's asking us to select our mate connectors. So when we hover over a shape, you'll notice that a bunch of these points are visible and there's this circle thing that appears when we hover over it. And so these are a bunch of potential mate connection points that Onshape has generated for us. If you want, you can also create your own with the mate connector tool there. And so we're going to want to define with this the point of contact between the two pieces. So we want to connect this 
this piece right here there to this piece right here there. So we're going to want to just go select the middle of the face right here, click, and then it'll select that part. And then we can go and select the middle of the face here and click. And so then, and then we can see that these two have merged together, which is not what we want. So what you notice is that you have these two options here, the flip primary axis and reorient, reorient secondary axis. And so these allow you to move around the pieces a bit to get them to what you want. So things like that, but then that, but then we want this side to face in other directions. So we can then press that and then press the check mark. And then just like that, we have these two pieces connected and and I cannot move one of them really without moving the other. They are a single unit. So yeah, it's not really moving around. Additionally, um, in the assembly and in the instance bar, there's some important things that could be useful. You press the icon to hide stuff, but then you can also press this button that says fix. And so but when, when a part is fixed, it will not move in the assembly. So you want to keep a part in a certain spot and only in that spot you can fix it. You can also, you also, if you want to, um, let me see if I can find it. You can press and make transparent tool. And this will do is you can still kind of see it, but you can also, it makes transparent. So you can kind of see that, yes, that made connection has worked out. And so that right there is the fasten mate. Fairly, very, fairly intuitive. It's very convenient. A lot of your mates are going to be this. Um, works with cylinders as well and the like. And so, yeah. So next we have the revolute mate. And so it says here, mate entities align rotational movement about the Z axis. And so what this means is that, this means is that as shown here, this, this bar right here is mated to this windmill S design right here. And, and, so, and so with how this mate is oriented, the Z axis is kind of running along the bar. And the revolute will, will, the revolute mate will only, will only allow rotational movement about the Z axis. So that means that the parts, they won't slide, they won't slide along the Z axis, they won't slide along any other axis, they won't rotate along any other axis, they will just rotate along the Z axis. And that's all it's going to do. And when you're making the mate, the first part you select is the one that's going to be rotating, which in this case would be this windmill shape. And then the second part will be the stationary one with the mate connector, which in this case could be this bar here. And you can also offset them on the Z axis. You can move this rotating part up or down the bar. And so we can create a quick example for that and quickly create new parts. We're gonna create two parts. We're gonna create kind of like a plus sign shape to be spun and then a cylinder for the part to be spun on. So to make the cylinder, very simple, we're going to sketch, select center point circle, and we're going to give it a diameter of, you can say, two inches, and then extrude it out by, let's say, eight inches. So that's that, and then we want to, we can, rename the part by right-clicking down here and system rename, we can rename it like bar or something like that. And so then we can go new part studio and we can go and make the plus sign. So select like sketch, do center point rectangle, mention this, 
In this case, we can make it six, and then we can equal, equal, and now we're square, and so now we're going to need first the circle in the middle where the bar can go into. So we're so going to, of course, want to have a hole. So to do that, we make a center point circle, set it to listen this up, set it to two. And then we can make kind of the plus shape that we want to make. So we're just going to drag from the corners to make can go two, two, simple. And then if we want to, we can just make the shape um, or we can use the linear pattern tool, except this part is any outwards. So to do that first, we're going to want to just quickly make an additional line there. I can use the linear pattern tool. Then we can select the square and then we can go out to four inches, just like that, very easy. And then go down by two and four inches, Oop. negative four inches. Okay that generated a bit wonky because we didn't show lines. So we just do that. Trim, trim it like that, like that. And then we're just going to just go around and trim these extra pieces on the sides. And I'm clicking multiple times because this was done a bit hastily, so there's some lines overlapping. But we have that shape. We can then extrude it, but forgot to trim away this part. So that there extrude and we can extrude it by we can just say one inch so now we have our bar and we have our definitely 100 percent authentic windmill so and so now we're going to want to bring them into an assembly so if we want to leave this gear i'm just going to delete them and then delete parts. And so we're just going to insert. First, we can insert the bar and we want that just centered. And then but close enough. And then we can pull in the windmill. And so then first we go to loot mate. Once again, it's asking for mate connectors. So first we're going to want to select they'll be moving so we can go there if i hold down shift i can easily access these three that are floating in the center so i'm choose just middle point there and then middle point there like that and press ok and so now we have a revolute mate this guy can still move along well no it can't because revolute mate sorry but it can um rotate so you can just you can rotate it but it's not going to be moving it's not going to be moving along the uh, z-axis whatsoever although it can sort to the bar but so that is revolute mate so useful if you want something, saying something else and spinning, but not moving in any other way. So after that, we have the slider mate. 
And Sutter made, says here, made tensities along translational movement along the Z axis. So, so what this does is it limits movement along Y and Z, sorry, Y and X axis, and there's no rotation. However, the part can move along the Z axis. And so the first part is the moving piece is the sliding point, and the second part we select is the stationary one. And so as we see, it can, with this plunger design here, it's rotating upwards and downwards. And so you can also, and also you can also set limits to restrict movement. Because while in this GIF is not showing it, this plunger piece here, it's not actually going to be necessarily limited to just moving within the larger plunger portion. It can move however far it wants up and down the z-axis. So you can set limits to restrict movement. And what that does is you can set, you can set settings like you can only move this many inches maximum along, along the z-axis. And so that way you can limit how far up or down it goes, which which can be important if you want a person moving, but you don't want them to be moving too far or just, well, just generally too far. So we can actually, we can actually reuse the bar here to give an example for that. So we're just going to, just going to delete this. So the bar, you can click and see, has a diameter of two inches. So what we can do, so what we can do is we can just quickly make a just quickly make a pipe shape, and then we can hollow it out using the shell tool afterwards. So we can use sketch, your plane, center point, and I'm going to make this two and a quarter inches, like so. And I'm going to, and I'm going to, and say, extrude it out by maybe something just, just like six inches, or we can just do 10. And then we can just, Shell sector face, and I'll make the shell thickness point two five. So that this one that's too small because I have to remember that it's going on both sides. So you can just do if we're too lazy to do the math, we can just do one two five divided by two. And that'll give us the correct diameter. And so we can then go into our assembly two, we can insert quote unquote windmill. And then we can go to the slider mate. We can go in and select the first shape that we're moving. And we are selecting the center right there. And then for this shape, we can just select the center like that. And then we press the button right here. This will animate the degree of freedom. So as you can see, it's sliding in and out like that, but it's not moving in any other direction. So that would be a slider mate. And then the limits, offsets, you can offset it a bit in any direction while still limiting that degree of movement. And then you can limit, so you can select the maximum distance that it can go, as well as select kind of the minimum. So we can say, oh, you can only go two inches out or whatever. And then, going that, but then we also don't want to go backwards too much. So like that. We're gonna set that to zero. And then like that, we've limited that degree of movement. And so it can only move 
in and out like that. So fairly simple slider mate. So that can be useful for pneumatic cylinders, plungers, what have you. So afterwards that uh, we have the planar mate. Um, when I first started on shape, I used the planar mate a lot because it was similar to SOLIDWORKS and how it functioned. Don't always just rely on the planar mate because it can, it can cause some issues if you're just using a bunch of planar mates to define shapes. But what it does is it basically makes a part slide on another part. So you can see here, the cylinder is able to move along the x and y axis, but it cannot move upwards or downwards, which is the z axis. However, it can rotate on the z axis. So it's kind of like a hockey puck on ice. It's just going to be sliding on any shape that you make. And as is the common trend with all these mates, the first part that you select is going to be the part that's moving. So in this case, the cylinder. And the second part that you select is going to be the stationary part, which in this case is the box. And the player may can also offset, offset parts on the z-axis, so it can make the cylinder hover a bit above the box. So we can go and make a quick example for that. Once again, we can reuse the bar, getting a lot of good use out of that. Um, also, one thing, if you want to quickly edit a part that that that's that they're using in an assembly, you can right click and then click click this. It says switch to bar, and then the program will automatically move you to the part studio that contains the bar or whatever piece that you choose. So we're going to quickly delete these mates. So we've that part. We're now going to so that we're gonna I'm pressing control Z to go back. We're just going to just going to use blank pattern. I guess it's like sketch plane, so front. And then we're just gonna quickly make um its dimensions don't really matter, but 10 by, I guess, we can make it 12. And then we can extrude it by half an inch, like so. Go into our assembly, press insert, select the piece that we want. Either have it centered or not, we just make it centered. It can look nice. I'm going to right click to kind of reset my view a bit. And then, so then I want to make sure that this piece is sliding along this. So what I can do is I can go over to my planar mate. So once again, we're selecting the points of contact between the two parts. So, so the part, so the area where this piece is contacting this piece is going to be this bottom face here. So I select that. And then it's going to be contacting this entire face here. So I'm going to select the middle of that, like so. And as you can see, with the animated degree of freedom, it can slide, it can slide along that piece along the z-axis, like so. And it's also, it's, not, it's hard to see, but it's also rotating. So once again, you can, you can offset, so I can make it go higher or lower than off the piece. It's still gonna function just fine. And then you can also set limits so you can limit the movement. So I can say like, oh, I don't like, oh, I don't want this to be moving more than negative four four in these directions. And then it's limited by that. And I can set the same thing for X. And then it's not limited and it can only be moved within that area that I've created. So that's the planar mate.
afterwards, we have the cylindrical mate and pencil mate. But so cylindrical mate is fairly similar to the revolute mate in that it's focused on rotation. However, it differs from this, whereas this one, the piece that's spinning can only rotate. In this case, the piece can also be moved along the z-axis. So it's rotation movement about the z-axis as well as translational movement. And so as the trend goes, the first mate connector is the piece that's moving. The second mate connector is the piece that's not moving. And you would and you would create it in the same way that you would create the revolute mate. It's just that it can now rotate as well. So, so we don't really need an example for that because it's going to be created in the same way. Just know that this also allows up and down movement. So it's it's essentially the merger of the slider mate and the revolute mate. And so of that we have the pin slot mate. And so the pin slot mate, it essentially uh, it allows rotation movement along the z-axis, but then translation movement along not the z-axis but the x-axis. So that's how it differs from the cylindrical mate. And the first piece is the piece that moves and rotates. The second piece is the stationary point. So, so as shown as shown in this example with this bolt right here, it is able to move left and right but also rotate. So we can so we can fairly easily be something like that. In fact, to show it easier, what we can do is we can pull from a piece from the past lesson by going to our other documents, going to virtual CAD workshops, and we can pull out this piece except it's not working so we'll just we'll just make our own simple simple little um screw to work by modifying our trusty bar and i'm just doing this so that it's more easy to see the rotational movement so we're just going to make a sketch on this this time it could be a bit wonky but we're just going to make a simple square that can that functions for demonstration purposes. So we're going to make it just like that, and we're going to extrude it out by one inch. So we have this bare approximation of the screw with diameter of diameter of two inches, and then we're going to quickly just modify this sketch here and I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make a groove for this piece to fit in. So to do that, I'm just going to grab center point circle diameter of two inches. I'm going to pull another one diameter of two inches. Just like that. And then these are both at the same height because they're both centered on this planar, planar, planar line right here. So then I can just make the two lines between the two. And then I can use the tangent mate to just go and set these two points, tangent, 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 tangent. And then I can trim that like that. I'm going to extrude, we're going to do remove, and we're just going to do through all, which will just cut through all of that's existing. So, now we have this little groove that we can then try out the mate on. So we're going to go, we're going to insert 
first groove piece, and then we can also insert the bar. And the bar we can quickly just rotate 180 degrees so that it's facing just a way that's easier for us to see. It's skewed, but okay. So first we want to select our pin slot mate. Then we're going to select the piece that's moving, in just case this. Once again, it's generally good practice for a lot of these kind of cylinder focused mates to just select the center piece. So I'm gonna click there. And then we're going to click the slot where it is going to be stationary. So just like that. But we notice that this is brought to the center, but we're gonna want this to be kind of hanging down. So instead we do is we're gonna select from the screw. We're gonna select this top point here. Click check. And so now so now it's so now it's made it together. It's free to it's free to move move that. Um, you notice I'm pulling the cursor directions and it's not going to be moving. It says moving the entire thing. So it can only move along that one axis. And then if we rotate, it can then rotate as well along the axis. But still turn out a bit wonky sometimes. But so that's that's in essence that for that made functions. We can edit you know, later. We can set limits on how far it can rotate, um, all that, and also we can offset it to the z axis. So that is the pin slot mate. And now we have ball mate. So this is a, another first simple mate. Um, it may turn to use along rotational movement about the x, y, and z axis, but no actual translational movement. So it's not going to be moving in any direction, it's just going to be rotating. And so you first you select the ball when you're rotating, which in this case is this kind of claw like shape. And then the secondary mate is just the stationary part, which will be housing the ball. So show that I've got these two guys right here, got ball connector, ball, and then the connector. So you're going to want to choose ball mate. Note is that when you, with ball mate, the first part you select, it will only really, not really select just the ball. So it's that very easy. And then we're gonna go and select the point where it's gonna be inserted. So press right there. And then we're gonna press check. And then notice we have a ball here now. It it can Rotate and do its thing, but it's now, yes, it can rotate towards any axis, but it's now housing here. And of course, it can, it can still end up clipping into its housing because on shape does not have any way to detect when your wing shape is about to intersect with the geometry and prevent it. So the only way to prevent that would be. Honestly, not much, not much with the ball mate. Um, so you just have to, for you have to, for whatever reason, just try not to get it to um, conflict too much. You can also, with any mate, edit mate connectors individually, which allow you to just realign them so. Just kind of change the way the actual circle thing is facing, and also 
move them. So like I moved that. So I managed to reorientate that by just moving the point in that direction. I don't know if I just move. So that's the ball mate. And then here's the final more traditional mate, and that's the parallel mate, which essentially it makes it so, so that two pieces are parallel to each other. So if we just take this shape here that we that we've created, just delete that. Um, it all might a mate because we deleted the part that was associated with the mate. We're just gonna add in another windmill. Select parallel mate. It's gonna ask you what pieces to make parallel. So we're going to select this piece. Control shift, select the middle, flip to the other side. Select that. And so now these are parallel. However, they've also kind of merged together. So what we can do to fix that is just limits two. And so by so by, by doing this, what you're doing is you can actually intentionally move them away. So we want to move these up or down. So we can just set eight. Eight, and so now these are spaced apart. And for the range of movement, they can see it can just kind of move wherever, but it's always going to stay parallel if I rotate one piece, which I'm dealing with, but if we rotate one piece, this piece would rotate along with it, and it follows in the movement and all that. So so, for example, um, it's it's useful if you have like two pieces that are spaced apart and connect you with some pistons or something or some cylinders, but you want them to stay always parallel so then you can create that constraint. And so the final mate, which is a which is a special kind of different mate, is the tangent mate, which all of the previous mates use those mate connectors with that circle. The tangent mate does not have that. Instead, you just select faces, edges, vertices between two shapes, and then those shapes will always be tangent. So as you can see here, we have a cylinder in this box. The, the outside of the cylinder has been set to be tangent to the outside of the box. So no matter how you move it, the cylinder will always remain tangent to the box. And so this we can kind of can the we can and we'll then insert the windmill, which a bit large in comparison, but works. Set so tangent, we can then select like set so like um this piece here to be tangent to this piece. And then what that does is that this, this ball part is always going to be contacting this outer, this outer edge in some way. So, that, so that's, that's what that can be useful for. Second was that way, yada yada. So, Tangent made. Um, you can you can in theory um, attach multiple pieces. Sorry, you can in theory fully define two pieces together by using like two or three tangent mates to attach other edges. But you can still achieve that same effect by just outright using the fasten mate, which is the option that I would recommend when possible because it makes it more simple. And it makes it easier to work with because you have less mates that are sitting around in your timeline, whatever. So you have less to go through. Everything stays more organized. And generally speaking, everything is nicer and easier to do. 
So like, and so, so before we continue, you can also, of course, um, also, of course, have multiple, have multiple mates going on in a single, in a single assembly. So, so for example, I can say, oh, I want to put these guys in, and then we're going to, we're going to quickly use fasten mate on these two. So like there, there, and I'm going to get and all that. So that's all, so that's all working. And so then we can say, okay, cool. But then I want to also put, I also, I also want to put this piece in like so. And I want it to be able to slide along this so we can then planar mate. You can select center of our revolute shape, select this. And so now that's made to that. And while these two cannot move whatsoever, this piece can then slide on this piece right here. So that's, so you, so you kind of mix and match. Um, for example, example, if you were, if you were putting down some screws, you would use, you would use just a lot of fasten mates and then it, the screws could be part of a wheel assembly, which case for the wheel, you would then want to use the revolute mate or something similar to that. And so the final kind of mate feature, which um, can function similarly, sorry, similarly, I'm missing my words, that can function like Regular mate would be this function right here called the group function. And so what this does is that all pieces selected within the group will move relative to each other. So group, we select all these pieces, click OK. And so while these pieces are not made together by any of these mates, functionally, they're essentially fast and made together and they will all move as a unit, like so, because they've been grouped together as opposed to, there's no group, then this piece can just be moving around on its own. And, so some, uh, another important feature for um, assemblies are we have our assembly linear pattern and assembly circular pattern tools. And so this is something that you're probably a bit familiar with because it exists um, within sketches or sketches, because in sketches you have instead linear pattern and circular pattern. And so just like the linear pattern and circular pattern, this tool will allow you to create a series of patterns of like a certain shape or geometry in an assembly. So to um, demonstrate that, we can have our bar and then we can make a pattern of holes where we want the bars to be made it to. So we can go to our windmill. We can quickly just delete these sketches and make this just a bit larger, make it 16 by 16, because that's easy. And then we're going to want to create some of our holes using the linear pattern tool. So I'm just going to please make a center point circle we're just going to set diameter to two, and we're going to offset it. And offset it by just just one inch from 
oh, two inches from each side, like so. And then, then you guys know how the linear pattern tool works. Select the circle. We're going to just this out. We're gonna we're gonna maybe get four of these and space them four apart. Drag down four of those spaced four apart and extrude select it uh, automatically um it automatically just assumed that you well know, it automatically just assumed that we're going to be cutting that's all good um it's red so okay, we're just going to that is not correct Oh yeah, yeah, because it just does automatically. So we now have our series of holes where we're going to insert the bar. So we go to our assembly. Also, you'll you will notice um, when a part gets altered in its part studio, it gets automatically updated into the assembly. So you need to be careful while doing this sometimes because you could be working a part that's already made together in assembly. And then you could end up breaking those mates by changing some of the dimensions of the part that you're working on. So something to be careful about. So we're going to insert the bar. I'm gonna quickly just rotate it, look nicer. And so we just want this to be static sitting in there. So we're gonna use our fasten mate going to select the top of the cylinder, which is where it meets the square. I'm going to select the center here. That's been fastened. Although you notice that it's clipping into the shape, that's because um, we chose the bottom sort of option. So we have, we have like a bottom one, and then we have a top option. So we want to make sure that we choose the top option for this. So then that's fastened, made it in. It's not going to be moving. And so now we're going to want to use our assembly linear pattern. So we want to select this instance and for pattern direction, leave. So, so what it did so what it did was I selected selected the screw and then by pressing this face I, I indicated that I wanted the pattern to be going along this direction here. So then we want to space them part by four. We want to flip the want to flip this. So I flip this direction, and then we want to say we want four of these. And so just like that, we have just like that we have created one going this way, and then we can also click second direction, and then just like it's like a standard pattern. We'll do that. Distance for instances for. And what you'll notice is that since we're getting an assembly, it will give you the option for a third direction, which in essence, in essence means that you can make a pattern that goes in all three directions, which can be useful if like you have a layer design of repeating patterns. So we're like, so like for example, we had another one of these plates that was sitting up here. Then we could pattern upwards like that and save us a lot of work. But for now, we don't have that. So we just say okay. And now we have our wonderful linear pattern. And so that is um so that is, in essence, all of the um, basics of mating, how mates work, how, how assemblies work, 
and generally how to how to bring um, geometry together. And a lot of times with mates, it's a lot of oftentimes problem solving where you have these two pieces you want to bring together, and so you have to think about what could be the most effective way to reach the piece together. Because you, you have to think about like what do you want these pieces to do, how are they meant to be sitting. Generally speaking, fastened is going to be used a lot for just building up a static design, like a chassis or something. But then when you have bearings, moving parts, all that jazz, then you're going to want to move on to some of the other mates, which will then satisfy one or more of those needs. And so um, it is, it is a uh, bit earlier, but um, we should kind of reach the point where we have a quiz and then just answering some questions. So, so firstly, um, what mate would you use to lock two pieces together with no freedom of movement? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, fasten mate. Exactly what exactly what you want to use. We don't want those pieces moving whatsoever. Nobody wants that. That will be a bad time. It's always a bad time when your assembly starts getting all wonky because you mess up one bait in some place and then starts breaking. So fasten mate, very useful. Next question then is. What tool provides rounded edges and which tool provides beveled edges? Yep, pretty much. Always, yep, fillet, fillet is gonna be rounded. Chamfer is gonna be those beveled edges. Very, um, very very useful um, for kind of guiding how pieces how pieces are going to be put together like a bearing or to more easily facilitate maybe a screw going into going into um, a hole or something. And so if you wanted to mate a bar that's going through a bearing while still allowing it to rotate, which mate would you use? We're talking only rotate, not any kind of Z axis motion going up or down. Just only rotation. Yeah, so cool. Yes, yeah, so if it's only rotation, it's going to revolute. However, if you want to have it also move up and down, it's going to be it's going to be cylinder. And if you want it to just be moving up and down, that's going to be slider. So cylinder is kind of the merger of the revolute and the slider mate. And so question four, um, why would you want to use the group tool as opposed to a mate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to save time is save time's a good answer. Um, oftentimes, oftentimes what happens is, especially especially if you're inserting an entire assembly into another into another assembly, you'll have all these parts that are inserted in, and they're in the right places. However, they aren't made it together, so you just group it all together. It makes it all nice and easy. Yeah, pretty much simplicity is makes it all nice and easy. Everything, everything just kind of works and everybody is happy. And so, yep, so that was today's lesson, kind of introduction to, um, introduction to mates. Um, through this link on, on our um, resources document, there's a link to an Onshape article 
which provides summaries of all of the mates and how to use them if you want a refresher or a general kind of guide. And so, yep, that also has your homework assignment. And James, we can just have a good day. Um, use the mating tool to your heart's content. And hopefully we get to see some cool puzzles. Oh yes, sorry. Um, so, um, so um, we're coming by three dimensional puzzle. So, essentially, essentially, just make 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 a few pieces, like four to five pieces or three pieces, that you that that they can kind of go and put together. Um, what I had before with the um, with like all the slider mates. And all that coming together, that could be um, that could be an example of that being said, like th this year. Sorry, could be an example of a dimensional puzzle. Just just essentially make just make a good essentially make a good bit of pieces and then connect them together. Try and use um, at least three different kinds of mates. Um, you can definitely get creative maybe have like a plunger portion or may, maybe have a portion that spins with another piece fastened to the spinning part. Just certainly just, just build up, just build up a bunch of pieces that you've learned from your shooting skills and, and bring them together in some way where they interact in a mated environment. And so, um, so we'll probably want that, probably want that done and shared by the Wednesday meeting. And um, it doesn't have to be anything too extravagant or mighty, but just something to give you good practice with the fundamentals of the mating tools, just to help your understanding with them. And um, but yeah, the puzzle the puzzle term it's used it's used a bit loosely. You can think of it as well as maybe kind of like, I guess an abstract art piece. Um, but I guess if, I guess for like more like specific examples, yeah. So so more more kind of certain examples. If it was for example, you could make a cube that's assembled with like six pieces that have grooves where they interlock. Something like that, for example. Um, but does anybody else have any questions? Um. Cool. Um, if not, then um, everybody have a great day and we will see you on Wednesday.